Greetings, everybody. This is Reggie Middleton, and I am showing uh, or giving an illustration of the technology that I'm looking to embed in the commemorative silver rounds that are being sold, the very tasty and smart metal one-ounce silver rounds. Uh, they're smart, much smarter than any silver I've seen. What it is, or what it is, what they are, are precious metal rounds, one ounce silver, with a QR code, outverse and reverse, you know, back and front, and uh, that will lead you to a smart contract that will give you a private key to claim ownership of the round. That private key um, will be on the Ethereum network, running off of base the layer two for speed and efficiency. And we are looking to embed that uh, NFT with hyperintelligence. Um, it will be an embodiment of the, some of the many things that we can do with our patents and technology. Uh, Veritaso now has seven patents and uh, counting. And we believe that these patents are very strong. This is an example of what we're going to do with one of them. Okay, just having the silver rounds represented on the blockchain is a big deal to many, but that is not even scratching the surface. Here I'm holding a Samsung S25 Ultra uh, with the newest high speed chipset from Qualcomm, etc. etc. I have downloaded an 8 billion parameter um, artificial intelligence large language model, and I've downloaded it and customized it to run on this phone. It is running on the phone. So all your information, all your data is completely private because it's on the phone. Okay, you, when you do a prompt, you don't have to go and ask open AI servers or Anthropic servers or Google Gemini servers or anybody else, not DeepSeek. Everything's running off the phone's hardware. And it's pretty amazing. So let's give it a try. Um what is capable when you run a eight billion parameter L M So I asked it a question and we shall see how it answers. I'm sure there are typos in there, but let's see what it says. Extreme typos. Wow. Let's see if we can figure out what I said. Now, as it's calculating this, Right. Number one is probably just trying to figure out what I said. I made a, just a big mess there. Very hard to type on a command line on a cell phone when you have bad eyesight. So as it's thinking through, trying to make do with the mismatch that I put in. This model, this LLM AI model, does inference time reasoning. It thinks. So it just doesn't go to a large database of information that it was trained upon, which I'm not a big fan of because the internet is full of bias. If you do a Google search on my name, you'll come back and you won't get the truth. You'll get what this particular editor or reporter decided to say 
what this particular judge may have ruled that may have been contrary to the evidence presented or the law or what a certain other large entity and not necessarily a good actor may say. I would like to program AI that goes for the facts. It goes through primary sources primarily, and then it checks these primary sources. You, you could just go through legal rulings and imagine instead of going through legal rulings, you went through actual evidence or argument presented so you can audit the decisions of the judge themselves. Dangerous stuff. And we're back. Now, I answered the question. Um, I had to figure things out, so pardon me. That's why I never do a live demonstration, right? Um, I asked if I can take the model, the LL model, and ask it to make transactions according to patent US 11895246. If you look at the lower bottom left hand corner, you see the dots going around the circle? That means that it's linking. It's inferencing. And now you see the phone has heard a siren in the background and now that's the phone's AI doing something, but that's very different from this custom AI that I'm putting in. Okay. Look at it thinking. Look at it expanding tokens. Tokens are like the intellectual capital currency of the model. You spend tokens um, to get it to think. You purchase these tokens from the vendors who try to profit from these models. Google, you know, Anthropic, OpenAI, etc. When you're running this off of your own hardware, your tokens are only the cost of your hardware, the electricity, you know, etc. So you theoretically have unlimited tokens. You know, each model is only capable of a certain amount of tokens, but you simply, you know, once, once you get to the limit, you start over again. Um, I'm very excited about this. This is super nerd stuff, but I'm a super nerd. Imagine the capabilities of having this level of intellectual capacity running on your cell phone with complete privacy, right? Complete data control combined with the powers of value transfer on a blockchain, a distributed ledger, powered by all of the intellectual property that the learning that I have put in through the patent office. This is some exciting stuff. So as it thinks through this question, and I don't know when or where I stopped the video, but we can scroll up. It won't let me scroll up while I was thinking. Um, I was going to show the question that was put to the uh, AI. So as this thinks through it, and it was a pretty difficult question because to date, I don't think anybody else has figured this out. So I'm going to pause this video and I'll restart it when we get an answer. Okay, so I am back and you see the AI is answering the question. It, it thought about it, it reasoned, and it pulled out my many typos, which is significant because, you know, there were a lot of them in there. I would realize, I would recommend, um, most people wouldn't be using a command line prompt like I am. They'd be going through the interface that we built to make things nice and neat and pretty. But in the meantime, type it out in Word, copy it, and then paste it into this command line. But... AI senses for legal transactions, drafting legal documents, etc. Use of legal AI tools. It slightly missed the mark, but it's still quite impressive. At first, I had to decipher my Ghibli doc, which was supposed to be an English sentence. And then it's going through using um, the AI to use the patent claims, but it's looking to decipher it from a legal perspective. So we will have... Um, ready-made prompts that will go into the AI, but it will direct the AI to do certain transactions. Buy, sell, swap, negotiate, mediate, um, partial fill, uh, transfer, 
or bridge from one chain to another, etc. Maybe a couple of hundred, a few hundred, maybe even a thousand transactions. And then we'd have an open prompt where it can reason and think things out to itself if it runs into a snag, which would be very cool. According to what's capable or taught in the patents, um, the users get to okay every transaction before it's completed. That's why you don't have to trust the other side because you're never thrust into a deal that you're not prepared for, at least in terms of the actual terms and the data used. This is very slick stuff, actually. Um, this is a very rudimentary test, but for those who understand what is capable, this is a paradigm shift. Amazing as is thinking through this. Final answer. Certainly, if you're looking to create transactions based on specific patent claims of intellectual property laws, AI models can be a valuable tool to assess in drafting and managing such documents. So what it doesn't realize is how ambitious I am. I am not looking for the AI to manage the documents. I'm looking for the AI to manage the actual transactions themselves, predicated and taught by the actual claims. I will have this stuff ready for a public preview sometime in the future. I'm not going to commit to it. But I just want those who understand what's going on to realize, you know, what Veritasium is doing, what I'm doing. Crazy stuff. Okay. If you're very strong in large language models or solidity engineering, talk to me. Okay? We can't pay you just yet, but uh, we definitely have some exciting things on the pike. Automated compliance. Drafting contracts. Legal assistance. I'm really in a big, big boy's playground right now. This is my version of Toys R Us. For those old enough to even know what Toys R Us is, they went out of business, if I'm not mistaken. Automated compliance. So it does understand what I want, what I had in mind. And remember, this is all done completely on the device. No servers, no big companies, data centers, no peeking through data, none of that. Very, very cool. Consult legal experts. If you remember the mantra of Veritasium when it launched in 2014, loans without banks, trades without exchanges, contracts without lawyers. It's real, fellas and girls and guys. It's real. I will test this out on a different phone with more memory, which should allow this to run a lot faster with the same chipset. This was running faster, but I have two processes running simultaneously. So these questions, there are two of them being answered at the same time. One in the background, one in the foreground, plus everything else running on the phone. I'm going to bring this whole world into the next paradigm. The question is, do I drag it kicking and screaming or do I drag it in elation of a new economic reality? Hmm. 
cool. Peace.